Hi, I'm Mark Jordan Legan, and this is Summary Judgment, a weekly digest of what the nation's critics are saying about some of this weekend's new movie releases. Two big summer comedies and a quirky indie road movie are on the menu, and we'll start with the art house release of Away We Go. Written by the novelist Dave Edgers and Vendela Vida and directed by Sam Mendes, an unmarried couple expecting their first child decide to travel across America visiting friends and family and trying to decide the best place to raise their bundle of joy. Everyone from John Krasinski to Jeff Daniels to Catherine O'Hara are part of the ensemble cast. You're leaving in June. Mm -hmm. The baby's due in July, right? Mm -hmm. To Antwerp, City of Light. Well, that's not... No, you're not. No, we are. It's going to be superb. No, and don't say that word. We thought you'd be proud of us. We've been talking about this for 15 years, and now we can finally do it. You're leaving a month before the baby's born? You're, you're moving 3,000 miles away from your grandchild. Well, I think it's more than 3,000, isn't it, Cherry? Oh, I think so. I... Some critics enjoy the ride, and others wanted to be left off at the rest stop. Even though USA Today cheers a movie with memorable and engaging performances, the Los Angeles Times shrugs a quirky and episodic comic drama that squanders its genuine assets, and Variety Growls emerges as an oddly sour, unappealing road trip. And next is the highly anticipated rowdy comedy, The Hangover. I mean, how the hell does a tiger get in the bathroom? He almost killed me. A group of buddies go to Vegas to throw their friend a bachelor party they'll never forget. Unfortunately, the next morning, they can't seem to remember much of anything, and they've also lost the groom-to-be. All right, what's the last thing we remember doing last night? Well, the first thing was we were on the roof, and we were having those shots of Jaeger. <laughs> and then we had dinner at the Palm, right? That's right. And then we play craps at the Hard Rock, and I think Doug was there. That sounds right. No, 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 he definitely was. What is this? Oh my God, that is my tooth. Why do you have that? This is one hangover the critics do not want to sleep off. <laughs> oh, we were messed up. The Hollywood Reporter applauds, piercingly funny. The Austin Chronicle raves, instantly has the feel of one for the ages. And the Miami Herald shouts, remains unrepentantly irresponsible and hilarious throughout, culminating with what could be the funniest montage ever to grace a picture's end credits. This isn't the real Caesar's Palace, is it? What do you mean? Did, um, did Caesar live here? Um, no. I didn't think so. And competing against the party animals in Vegas is Will Ferrell's comedic take on a 1970s Saturday morning action adventure, Land of the Lost. Yes, Farrell and associates get sucked into a time vortex and must battle dinosaurs and other strange creatures in this bizarre new world. I don't use the same thing over and over. Sorry, 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 sorry. Chorizo tacos. Are you saying chorizo tacos? Don't play around because I am super hungry. Sorry, sataka. What the hell does that mean? Well, I'm afraid we'll never know. Huh. Oh, okay. Most of the reviews want this film to get lost. You guys are being so generous. And USA Today speaks for many critics with, it's hard to know just who the intended audience is. The movie is too surreal and body for young kids and too silly for anyone older than 25. The New York Daily News size, this lumbering, ha-ha, look what we remade action comedy is a high concept disaster. And the Boston Globe complains, genially terrible, this is a lazy, sloppy, multiplex filler. I got sleepy. I lived on multiplex filler in college. Oh no, wait, that was Hamburger Helper. Well, anyway, I can't believe that someone dropped the ball on one of Sid and Marty Croft's Saturday morning epics. I hope this doesn't ruin the chances of Journey to the Center of Lidsville or David Fincher's intended three-hour drama, The Curious Case of H.R. Puffin Stuff. 